I looked over and then I heard Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. So in this episode, I want to break down how it was for me, my first time at CFRC, which is Central Florida Reception Center. So it was around 6 a.m. when the county bus pulled into the Sally Port. And the Sally Port is just a place where the bus pulls in and they have a tunnel in the middle of the road, which the bus pulls over so the officers can inspect underneath. They use it to make sure no one is escaping out or coming in. Then the door on the bus opens and a correctional officer comes rushing in. He's screaming, get the fuck off my bus, line up outside, butts to nuts. Everything you say is yes sir or ma'am or no sir or ma'am. At CFRC, there's a notorious Spanish officer and he's quite the shit eater. He made all of us get in a line and then we had to turn to the right where he was standing around five feet from us. There was about 15 inmates. Then he started screaming, take off your fucking clothes and throw them on the ground. We all got butt booty naked and then he screamed again, turn around and spread your ass cheeks, squat down and cough three times. I guess he wanted to make sure we weren't bringing anything in the good old fashioned prison wallet. After we face forward again, he said to lift our nutsack. He checked all our lifted nutsacks and then he said, now with that same hand you lifted your nutsack with, take those two fingers and rub them around inside your mouth. Now this is a perfect example of the games these correction officers play. He was just trying to get everyone to stick their dick hand into their mouths. So I quickly changed hands, no dick hands in this mouth. He screamed, y'all may run your hood, but this is my hood, I, you don't run shit. We're about to go inside and don't fucking look at any female officers and don't say a fucking word. It should be so quiet I could hear a mouse piss on cotton. We were all in our boxes at this time. When we got inside, we had to go to the property window. As each inmate waits to hear his name called, there are a bunch of correction officers walking around just waiting for some dumbass to open his mouth. I finally heard my name. In order to walk anywhere, your hands must be behind your back. I finally got up to the property window. The correctional officer had all my pictures and letters from county jail out on the counter looking through everything. Then I turned right to see what the hell that was. The inmate had a handprint across his face. The officer was screaming at him, say more, one more fucking word. The officer at the window told me to look at him. When I did, I glanced over again. The officer screamed at me. I'm pretty sure some inmate got smacked like four times after that. I kind of lost count. After I got my property, it was off to the barber. This is when they buzzed my head on zero. The inmate barber was telling me, this is just some rah-rah shit they do. But then they'll smack the fire out of you at the same time. After that, I had to go see the gang sergeant, which was an, at another counter behind the barber chairs. He basically was looking me up and down at all my tattoos to see which gang I belonged to. I have a porn star tatted on my stomach. He said, oh, you you're a porn star, huh? You like the fuck? I didn't say shit. I wasn't about to respond and get my ass smacked. I just kind of gave him a head nod. After that, another officer got like five of us and we were headed over to a wall with five shower heads. He handed us all a bar of soap. It was about the size of a little Reese's peanut butter. Small. We had two minutes to shower and the water was hotter than black tar pavement in August. At this point, we all been up since 3 a.m. and now it was pushing 1 p.m. All I wanted to do was lay down and go to sleep. We still had to get our pictures taken and then go see the nurse. And that's when they gave us a bag lunch. The lunch was more like a snack you would give to your dog. The infamous mystery meat sandwich. And it's still infamous because I don't think anyone has ever figured out what kind of meat is actually in it. Two more hours went by and about six more smacks. Then they finally started to assign each inmate to what dorm we would be going to. They called my name and said, B dorm. Everyone from B dorm lined up. We all started to walk the compound of the prison to B dorm. All the inmates were in the yard and as we walked by the fence, they ran over and different inmates were yelling at some of the guys that were with me. 
They were seeing who they knew. I saw a couple people I knew, so I knew I was straight. I actually saw my boy Tommy Saporsky. At that time, he was a permanent there and was hustling. But that's just what Tommy does. When I finally got to the dorm, the officer in the officer station told me what cell I was in, and then he popped the door. There was a kid named V.I. in the cell. He was from the Virgin Islands, hint the name V.I. I asked him how long he had been at the reception center to get an idea on the amount of time that it was taking people to get transferred to their permanent camps. He had been there two weeks. I made my bed and laid down. The mat was lumpy as shit, hard, and I could not get comfortable. V.I. was on the top bunk, and he said, man, I know you've had a long ass day. You hungry? I said, nah, I'm good. He said, man, here, take a soup, bro. So I was eating and we were just vibing, seeing what county he was from. And I was saying, next stop's the street. That's when he said, the street, bro, I got life. So down in the comment section below, let me know what your response would have been. Support the channel and hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you can hear it first. More on this in the next upcoming episodes. I'm out.